why the self, the God of all universes, of which there are an infinite number, is 1250. To go from around 700 or so, which doesn't happen very often, on upwards is not a pleasant experience. It's not like the early, it's not like the high 500s. Uh, it is not exquisite Kundalini energy coming up through you and pouring out through yourself in, in exquisite. The nervous system is overly taxed and goes into exquisite pain. It's like a burning sensation of red hot. It's like the nerves have become barbed wire, hot barbed wire. It's a horrible sensation and it's throughout your whole aura, so you can't escape it no matter what. And this means that there's some awareness out. This signifies that there's something holding up the progression. Maybe that only happens if you're karmically destined to progress. Let's see, yeah, I bet. Um, that only happens if you're karmically destined to progress. Oh, okay. Oh, wow. So if you <laughs> have the misfortune of this being <laughs> karmically destined to progress, this uh, consciousness keeps going and it's not satisfied with 700. It should be. It's absolute totality, infinite bliss, the knowingness of the oneness of the divine presence but something out of some place can force it to grow and it goes beyond that. Hmm. Then goes these, there's these horrible experiences which go on for years and of, you can be driving along perfectly fine and suddenly a thought goes through the air somewhere and this extreme discomfort starts and you find that um, you find out what the error is and you correct the error uh, usually in the form of a prayer and then it disappears so this goes on for quite a painful period of time at the moment let's see I don't know if it was a moment it seemed like a moment at, at the time of which of which the mind disappeared it was like obliterated by an infinite presence of crystal clarity exquisite beauty exquisite gentleness and profound power beyond all imagination. All conceptions of power compared to the power of the presence is infinite, it's infinite, infinitesimal. So the mind is like, whatever is left of the mind is like obliterated. And for fun, some 30 years later, when I learned kinesiology, I asked, let's ask about it. That was the thought of an archangel resistant. <laughs> I want to give you some idea of power. In the pits of hell, the atheist says, beyond any hope, the atheist says, if there is a God, I ask him to help me. Then, infinite silence, then suddenly this infinite presence, absolute silence, and it was like you grabbed onto a 50,000 volt. The power was so infinite. So the response to the prayer was a thought, was a thought by that archangel, correct? Karmically thought. It's like a karmic, it, you know, I say it funny. It's like an archangel was cruising by and he hears this screech from the pits of hell and he gives it a thought, <laughs> instantly. <laughs> that which you were is totally obliterated for all time and the radiance shines forth and there you are barely able to see in the light, you know? It just gave you a passing thought, I guess. I mean, this is as good a way to describe it as any, anything, how it comes about. <clears throat> all is an evolution of consciousness and we call that evolution karmic. The word karma here does not mean reincarnation. Karma means that Consciousness evolves and each thing becomes an expression of its essence and we call that karma. Huh? You can't be a human being here sitting in a, bar, a body without already a, a karmic inheritance that allows you to do so. So there's no point to worry about karma because that which you are is your karma. The ego is your karma. There's no necessity to look for where it arose from any more than 
It's not too interesting how you broke an ankle. The problem is how to fix it. You know what I mean? As a physician, I'm the, I don't care how you broke it. You fell down the kitchen stairs, you're having a battle with your wife. That's all immaterial. You want to fix what the condition is now because the condition now is the inheritance of the past. It was the walking down the steps, the slipping on the banana peel, the argument with the spouse, the not paying attention. So however it arose karmically, as spiritual students, our presentation is the how we experience ourselves in the present moment as compared to how we would like to become in due time. Uh, so we said, the Archangel is 50,000 and up. <laughs> 50,000 up, 50,000 for jacks for openers. And the supreme and ultimate realization, of course, is God as <clears throat> unmanifest as well as manifest, because that which is manifest is both, is both manifest and beyond both. The ultimate reality is beyond either manifest or unmanifest, all of which are definitions of mind, and when mind stops, they're meaningless. Uh, so that was the first question for today. <laughs> <laughs> and why we should take a break, break for a snack and uh, we'll resume. So, okay. Here's some interesting questions. And what's the value of a mantra? Well, a mantra depends, uh, you know, calibrating levels of energy is useful. Uh, let's take one out of, uh, there's a translation by Satchidananda of a famous uh, spiritual classic. Uh, oh God, I forget the name of it. Um, let, let's do the mantra Aum. Okay. What's the value of a mantra? Well, it depends on a lot of things. Ah, uh, Om is over 540. Om, the mantra Om calibrates over 600, 700, 720, 740, 750. The mantra Om is in the 700s, resist. Okay. Okay, now let's go Aum. The mantra Aum, A U M, Aum is over 600. Two, it's over 300. Aum, 300. It's over through 10. Wow, well, whether you go Aum or Aum makes quite a bit of difference, right? You go Aum, you're going to take a long time to get enlightened, right? <laughs> <laughs> All right, so one reason for the lectures is that this comprehend the comprehension speaking to you now. Uh, is capable of explaining things that have been mis misunderstood. The reason for writing the books is to clarify things that are obvious, um, obvious um, with a capital O, but not obvious with a small O. So the, the purpose of uh, the 12 lectures, the books and all, is to fortify that which is known uh, in such a way that it is not misinterpreted later. To fortify it with such a bulwark of explanation, demonstration, uh, and clarification that it can't be misunderstood. The ultimate mantra is either Om or Aum, right? All right, so an authority such as Satchitananda translate, what is the book? Somebody gives the journal. It's a great spiritual classic. Great spiritual classic. Well, I'm sure all kinds of people study it, and yet it contains very serious errors, you know, very serious errors. So the purpose is, first of all, to provide sufficient information that it would be sufficient to take one the whole way, to share a, the subjective reality of it, and also to provide a tool by which the person, like a compass, can find their own way through the woods. Huh? And to also warn of the pitfalls, to warn of the pitfalls where many fall off. Seduction by that which sounds exotic, especially if it comes from some other realm. Everything from some other realm is called spiritual. There are many realms, and many of them are not where you want to go. <laughs> Nor do you want to follow their advice, and yet it's commonly done because it comes from Master Gunk Gunk on the other side. 
The person goes to the school and he says, he missed Baba Bucci is talking to me. He says, you should sell your livestock and move to Cincinnati and go out in the field and wait for the UFOs to get, come and reach you. Thank you, Baba. Yeah. So, no, if you're gonna uh, do any uh, channeling trances, uh, messages from the other side, you better calibrate them. Always calibrate the entity on the other side because there are good people, because there are different realms. Hmm. There's higher astral and lower astral. The higher, highest higher astrals are called celestial. There are multiple heavens. There are multiple purgatories. There are multiple hells. Mm -hmm.